Hello and welcome back to Toast and Strawberry Jam. Today is Top 5 Wednesday. So today's Top 5 Wednesday is your top five favourite maps in books. I have picked five books with maps in or mappy type things in and I've also picked a couple of books that I wish had maps in so that's like my little kind of addition uh, to this one and I would not be surprised at all if that came up like top five books you wanted to have maps in but I am doing mine uh, now in this video because while I was looking through my books I found a couple of books that I was like I really wish that this one had a map so I thought I would show those to you as well. The first book doesn't exactly have a map in the front but it does have like um, a picture that kind of shows the area that it's in and the book that I've chosen is The Sleeper and the Spindle by Neil Gaiman and it's illustrated by Chris Riddle and it's just got some really nice stuff in the front I'll try and get some like close-up shots of it if these don't work very well um, but they're just really really beautiful I really love Chris Riddle's drawing style um, just like the the line work is very uh, very appealing I um, mean he has a I have got a book that he illustrated um, The Last of the Sky Pirates and he did put like a map in the front of this one and it's really pretty as well so I thought I'd show you that. And there's another bit of map in the front there as well. So I haven't actually read this book but I do love um, Chris Riddle's drawing style and so I really really love uh, the maps that he's done in the front of this book. The second book that has a map in that I really like um, is Throne of Glass and mostly because I just love this series at the moment I'm just like obsessed with it and so I really really like it. I like the fact that it's got places in it that we haven't necessarily heard that much about and that kind of excites me because I kind of think that we're going to hear a little bit more about some of them um, and I, I really hope that we do. Um, and so, I mean, this is the first book, so at that point we didn't really know very much about witches, we still don't really know very much about witches, so um, there's like witch, a uh, witch kingdom over here that we haven't heard very much about, and so, yeah, I'm really, really excited to hear more about it, and looking at the map is really, really exciting, sort of gives us a bit of insight into what we've got in store, possibly, maybe, I hope so. The next book is A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin and the thing that I really love about this one is that it's just got so many maps in it. Um, so there's like four maps in the front of this one. I don't have any of the other books so I don't know if we have any like additional maps in any of the other ones but I really really like it. I really like it. It's like the north, the south that we've got, the land beyond the wall and the lands of summer sea, of the summer sea. So I really like um, I really like multiple maps. I like to see. I've not, I mean I've not read Game of Thrones all the way through. I'm only kind of like this far through, but I have seen the um, TV program and it does help with something quite as like epic as this series to have a map so that you can kind of gain a little bit more understanding of like where things are in relation to each other. Next, I've got the maps from the Aborsen series. Uh, the one I like. Um, particularly is the one from the Aborsen book and that's because it has um, a map of the world of the Old Kingdom and then a little bit of Anselcia, I, I can't really say that name, um, but it's also got a map of the grounds of the Aborsen house and also um, like a floor plan of Aborsen's house. So I really like that, just the little additions of those things, especially when they're like using the house. I like to sort of be able to look and, and see um like how many bedrooms there are because there's like four six bedrooms and there's like a reading room which would just be amazing so i just love i love that and yeah i love the little sort of you can see what's in the garden and some of the things aren't mentioned and i like that as well the fact that there's like just the, like little additions that aren't really important to the story but that they put in there because it it means that the map is like real and I like that. And then the last one is the front cover of Rivers of London. I really like, I don't think this has got like a map in the front of it, no. Or in the back, no. But the front cover is like a map of London and I really, really like that as well. It's nothing really like too exciting or anything like that and there's not like an awful lot of it. You can't see an awful lot of it because some of it's covered by this like stuff on the back um but i just like 
like little additions so like it's got elephant and castle here and there's like a little castle on the back of an elephant and then um the isle of dogs is like just like little dogs around there and i just think that that's really um it's really sweet like it looks just hand drawn and i really love how like how much stuff is in there like lots of little houses and then obviously the river and the dome and things like that it's just like really packed and i like this kind of map like sometimes you get it when you get like a tourist information map and i quite like it when it's like overly detailed i guess and then i picked two books which i really wish had a map in the first is the terry pratchett series discworld series i would really like a map of that like it might be a bit difficult to do i guess but um I would really like to have a map. I don't think any of them have got maps in them, like, or well, at least not any of the editions that we have. Um, but yeah, I would like to see a map of the Discworld. And I know that, I, well, I think that you can get maps online or you can get, um, like, sort of fan books and things like that, which probably have maps in, but I would really like, or I would have really liked a sort of canon map that was, like, in the front of, um, of the, the books themselves. And then I would really like a map in Daughter of Smoke and Bone or one of the books from Daughter of Smoke and Bone. I don't know what I would want the map to be of. Like, it's not necessarily a particularly, um, like, in-depthly described world. And I mean, some of it takes place um, on Earth and then some of it takes place on, like, a different, in a different world. I don't know what the map would be of, but I would just know that it would be really beautiful and I really want a map for... The, the worlds of Daughter of Spoken Bone and also like um, like within the Aborson series so plans of like houses and castles and things like that so um, the cash bar that we see I would really like a kind of a map of that with like the the pit shown and things so yeah I would really I would really like one for this one so if you know actually of anywhere that there is like a fan drawn maybe then then let me know in the comments below and i would love to see it there we go that's it that's top five wednesday they weren't in any particular order they were just in the order that i like pulled them off my pile and i don't actually like i couldn't think of very many books just off the top of my head that had maps in um i tend to just like flip straight forward to the story and if there is a map i just like kind of flip past it but i do like maps in books i like looking at maps they're very interesting and especially like i say the one on like the rivers of london um I, I really like that kind of map, that really kind of like overly detailed, hand-drawn looking type map. So there we go. That is it for this video. I do intend to be doing next week's top five as well and so keep your eye open for that. I have put quite a lot of videos up over the last couple of days because there's just been so much going on with like TBR takedown wrapping up and then there's been my July wrap up and my August TBR and if you haven't seen my book Tubathon TBR then you can find links to all of these videos down in the description below i will be linking to everything that i've put over, over the last couple of days and do follow me over on twitter and instagram i'm like tweeting a lot during booktubeathon because i'm just loving it so so much i'm not going to be doing any like daily wrap-ups or anything i was thinking about doing like